Blog Talk Radio. The new black wall. <laughs> Do it right, feel well, live life, economic empowerment, real tips, insight on the new Black Wall Street. Yeah. It's on the new Black Wall Street. Here's your host. Hey, it's your host, ERGJ, the Intelligent Investor, saying welcome to the new Black Wall Street. And today we're going to be discussing uh, Kid Best. Securing our children's financial future. And one of the things that we discuss is that, um, you know, Warren Buffett, who's the, the second richest man in the world, he um, actually started investing when he was 11 years old. And the question is, why not our children? Why not our children? Now, I can remember back when I was younger, um, you know, my, my grandmother, she would, at every birthday, she would send, she would not only send me a gift, but she would also send me what we these little paper no, these little paper notes and those paper notes were were treasury bonds or treasury bills and, and we put those treasury bills into a safe deposit box and year after year she would continue to send them and and, and I wonder you know is that still happening today uh, do we still have grandmothers grandparents that are that are investing into their grandchildren uh, setting them up for success and I, and I believe that there was a reason she did that she she understood something that her at her, her, her as she got older that um that it's important to invest and that was her way of, of showing us and, and continuing to, to to show a mode of, of investing into um into us at that time obviously i was three four five six years old i didn't understand uh, what the heck these little paper notes were but now that i'm older i understood that she was doing what she could to invest into my future and so today what we want to discuss is we want to discuss what we can do to invest into our children's future and to set them up for financial success. And so uh, today we have a very special guest um, here with us, uh, Mr. Prince Dykes, and I'll bring him onto the line in just a second. But we want to highlight uh, an entrepreneur, uh, a black entrepreneur that's been very successful thus far, and that is Michaela. Uh, Michaela is the uh, young black girl from uh, Texas who uh, started selling lemonade, started selling lemonade, had a special recipe that she got from her grandmother, and then lo and behold, got a million dollar contract from Whole Foods uh, to start distributing uh, bees lemonade, sweet bees lemonade in Whole Foods. And so that kind of says to me like, man, she got a million dollar contract to sell lemonade. And so if Michaela can do it, if she can find a niche, find something in the market in order to bring her prosperity and wealth, I'm sure that your kids can do it, that you can do it, that anybody can do it. Because all she's doing is selling lemonade with a little bit of honey in it. And, uh, and now she has a million dollar contract to continue to distribute that uh, through Whole Foods Market. But anyway, uh, we got Prince on the line. Prince is um, a uh, financial advisor. Uh, he has been um, you know, a-, a big advocate on YouTube, sharing a lot of uh, tutorial videos on how to invest in the stock market. Uh, he's got some new upcoming mm-hmm. events that are coming uh, out. Um, so I want to introduce Prince to our show today. Prince, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Definitely. Thanks for having me. Hey, Prince, how you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well, man. Thanks so much for joining us today, man. To, to have your wisdom uh, here on the show is going to be a big uh, big help. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. How you got started? How you got going? Um, uh, essentially, uh, I launched, uh, officially launched World Financial Investment Group about two years ago, and we initially started with our Facebook page, and then which eventually led to uh, YouTube, and initially went on to a website, and essentially uh, we put out a lot of videos, uh, a lot of people know us uh, from YouTube, and the videos are just a lot of tutorials, a lot of things of talking about how to do certain things, because uh, growing up in a situation where when I was trying to learn the market and figure out what this whole thing about stocks was and investing and how it worked, it was a lot of things out there that would just tell you about it, but nobody was actually showing you how to do it. So that's why I kind of said, well, you know, I'm just going to make tutorials and things that talks about it and stuff like that. So we had a lot of people uh, reach out and, you know, for a different uh, advice on things or different um, tutorials or videos that they asked for. So that's essentially how we got started. We you know we grew from Facebook to uh, YouTube to a website. We do blogs and uh, we put out a couple of uh, videos that was produced down in Atlanta itself that are you know that are done pretty well. 
So I think we're sitting over, we've grown all the way up to, I want to say 2,300 subscribers, a little bit over 2,300 right now, uh, which is pretty big, especially in the YouTube land when it comes down to investing, because it's not a very, you know, popular topic, a hot topic. But, uh, you know, we're still here and we're still moving forward and uh, we have plans to continue to do bigger and better things in the future. Fantastic. Now, now, Prince, you have uh, quite a few licenses here, man. It's, it's like, uh, you know, I'll be wondering, man, how you get all this stuff done. But I think you, you, you series 65, 63, insurance agent, MBA. Now, when you say series, you might want to explain what a 65 and a 63 license is for those that are not familiar with the whole okay. financial world and then kind of tell us what what, what kind of spurred you to, to continue to get the next license and the next license and the next license well um the thing about it was like uh, a little bit about myself it's pretty much essentially um initially I, I left home when i was growing up my parents just taught me to save and retire it's like hey get a job and just work it then you retire and my parents were there in their sixties. My dad, he's still living. He's sixty nine. My mom passed about two years ago, and in their era, that's what worked for them fine. But as we all know, in twenty fifteen, it's kind of hard and difficult to keep a job for twenty thirty years and go and pay your retirement and move on. So um, it told me it told me to stay away from you know the stock market, stay away from investing, just save up your money and work at a job and retire. So what I had done was I was always pretty good, pretty savvy with money. So uh, I didn't have any, you know, uh, debt. I had, I had any. I didn't have any debt. I had had a little money saved up, and I was saving more money. Then I was like, well, there's got to be something else. Well, I just can't continue to save money. What are other people doing? And I started to get to know uh, other people and started asking them what they were doing. They was talking about different investments, and I became intrigued by it. And so I went on and uh, earned my social degree, and earned my bachelor's degree, and earned my MBA. And I was looking for just for the thirst of knowledge. Uh, I went on and got the Series 65 and 63 license. The Series 65 is the federal uh, exam for investment advisor representatives. You know, it's the federal exam for investment advisor representatives, and essentially, for in order for you to have those licenses, you must essentially, it's pretty much just like any other license, is saying that, hey, this person essentially knows what they're talking about and they can get in trouble, essentially. But it's about uh, how can you advise on everything from insurance to estates to stocks to bonds to mutual funds, everything like that. And the Series 63 license is a federal license for security agents. It's a little bit, a little bit more difficult to understand, you know, as you know, when we purchase stocks, those are securities, and it's someone that sells those, and that's how the security agent thing falls in. And, you know, insurance agent is that a lot of times we, we don't realize that insurance is an investment. You know, we spoke about how can we leave something for our kids. You know, some it's unfortunate if people that pass away and families can't bury them or it sets the family back because there was such a big financial piece. And what I learned is that insurance, you know, insurance and investing goes hand in hand. And a lot of, if you, every financial company pretty much sells insurance because that's what a lot of companies uh, generate the cash flow from. We pay our premium every month. That's the cash flow for an insurance company. They take that money and they turn around and they invest it. So they, they go hand in hand. So that's why I uh, also have an insurance license. But for the, the, the major part of why I did those things was, you know, for the, the knowledge. I wanted to have the knowledge. And, you know, it's like anything else. I wanted people to know I had the knowledge. I knew I was missing something that I didn't know. And as I learned it and I learned how great it was and when I started investing, I started to reap some of the benefits, and I said, wow, you know, I really want to know this. So that's what has driven me to seek out the education and the professional credentials along with it as well. So so, so you, you you just mentioned something, uh, Mr. Dyke. Mm -hmm. you, you mean to tell me uh, with insurance, there, there must be a reason why Warren Buffett had such a big investment in the GEICO there. Yes, because, you know, you got to think about it. Every, we're required to have insurance. You know, everybody has to have a car, a car insurance or uh, house insurance and things like that. And it, it, it doesn't make sense to how can you pay, let's say, $200 a month for $100,000 worth of coverage. That, you know, an insurance company just doesn't get your money and just put it up under their mattress and then just hope you don't die. What an insurance company do is they are betting that you are not going to, they're, they're betting that you're not going to die. Well, you're betting that you are going to die. That's why they do these 
You know, that's why they go through the screening and processes to say, okay, well, we think this person will live the next 20 or 30 years, so we can gain this much premium for them. We can turn around and invest it so we can make those coverages. So that's what insurance companies do, you know. We're a constant cash flow uh, for them to invest, essentially. You know, you know what? We can, probably, we, can probably, we, can, we can probably stop the show right there because that might just change some people's the whole thought process, man. Just understand that piece <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wow! Well, yeah. oh, that is awesome. The thing, so, uh, go ahead. And the thing you got to keep in mind as well is that you notice that every investment company is also an insurance company. You never see insurance without investing or uh, some type of they got they got they go hand in hand. So I learned that wow. studying it. That's why I go out and that's why uh, I said, hey, you know, I really want to study this and learn these things. So. So, so one of the big things that I say, and I, I'm, I don't want to get too much into my quote, big quotes that I always use is that uh, formal education will make you a living and self-education will make you a fortune. And it seems to me that you've done a whole bunch of self-education. Have you found that to be um, the biggest piece to your, um, let's just say your background or your success has been what you've been doing from a self-education standpoint? Uh, yes, uh, a major piece. Um, you know, like I said, I went out of school and I, I got my MBA. And, you know, it's a lot of people who have their MBAs, but, you know, they introduce you to certain things. They tell you what it is, but nobody really teaches you how to do it. It's like, oh, well, you got this thing called a stock market. You got these different instruments you can invest in. Moving right along. That's how most formal educations are set up. So if you really want to know about certain things, you have to go out and uh, seek that, you know, um, education and that has been a great point you know that has been a uh, has done tremendous things for me about learning about you know investments you know everybody thinking when you think of the word investing you think of you know stocks but it's a ton of things out there from real estate to uh, mutual funds to annuities all those type of things you know uh, that I just did not know about and when I found those I was like wow you know this is what this is what I want to do and that's why you know I have that thirst for knowledge to keep doing it over and over and over the time you know people that follow me they've seen the uh, they see my ups and downs they see my success and things and that's one of the big things about uh the videos i just uh these screen captures if you follow me on facebook or any of my social sites you see that i actually just put the information out there you know it's for you i prove it with numbers i don't talk about it and say over and over what this is just just show you what the numbers here it is this is what i do this is what i've done this how you can this type of money can be made and that's it so and it's just anything that creates a source of revenue is a is a great thing that's it fantastic so uh for all the callers out there man i just want to kind of share with you a little bit about the new black wall street um and how this radio show kind of, kind of got going uh, we are a group that is uh is, is is hell bent on improving the financial literacy and economic awareness within our community and we say New Black Wall Street, when we talk about black, it's not just the color of your skin. Black actually equals wealthy. If you look at your personal balance, see, you're either in the red or you're in the black. And hopefully, um, this show will help you go from being in the red to being in the black. And if you are in the black, to even be more prosperous in your finances. And so, um, that's what the New Black Wall Street is all about. It's all about um, helping uh, each one teach one and helping everyone uh, to be in a positive cash flow, to be in that uh, cash flow co quadrant that Robert Kiyosaki talks about, and so, um, but we do reference the Black Wall Street, which is uh, which is we're paying homage to history. Um, there was a there was a there was a, a community of African American people that were wealthy, uh, that worked together, that built together, uh, and unfortunately were destroyed. But now we're in an age where we can't be destroyed because of the power of the internet and the power of um, global economics. And so, uh, Prince, uh, I'm going to ask you this, man, because I know you've been kind of following us. And as we've grown, we, we started with 25 people. And now we basically a network over 7,000 uh, in a couple, in about, mm -hmm. five, about three months. Um, or Prince, mm -hmm. what does the new Black Wall Street mean to you? Uh, the new Black Wall Street means to me is a, a group of like-minded individuals that came together that are, you know, uh, like you said, in a short time. Uh, you know, in a short time, that's came together and that's put together some great things. It's always kind of perceived that, you know, that people are not interested in this stuff. You know, people are, oh, nobody cares about it or whatever. And uh, like I said, I started in 2013. And uh, when I, I met you and 
been added to the new black wall street and stuff like that i've been there for the growth as well and to me what it means is that it means the future it means you know building something like-minded people who come together and support each other and share knowledge and put things out you know uh something i have been doing over the years you know on a consistent basis of you know putting valuable information out and sharing information letting information flow and essentially growing and prospering together that's what it means to me so as we get into the, the today's topic friends man we were talking about kids that's investing in our in our, in our children's future we, we talked about the uh, young lady nine-year-old who's got a million dollar contract we probably also know about the uh, damon john's investment into mose bowls who uh who makes bow ties he's a little uh, eight-year-old uh, what are some uh, what are some things that maybe you do now or or uh, that you would maybe even recommend uh, that we do for our kids uh, for those that are on the call today that have children um that want to start to invest and then not only what are things that we can do how can we actually get started well, one of the big things is that I notice, you know, I just look at my life, for example, I take myself and uh, like I told you earlier, you know, my parents always kind of taught me, say, hey, you know, just stay away from, you know, the market because it's risky. You know, you don't know what you're doing, you know, just save your money and invest. So when I left home, my idea, my mindset was that, hey, that's too risky. It kind of molded my mind in the wrong way financially to say I didn't want to invest because I was taught like, hey, that's too risky. Somebody's going to take your money didn't trust the market essentially so i wish you know if my parents would have known they would have they probably could have invested when i was a kid for me through a custodian account so essentially what can be done is you can i mean you know we can all open up custodian accounts and you can invest in your kids you know a lot of times people try to find the next big thing they think like okay what's going to be the next big thing but I mean, we can just all imagine, you know, what is Apple going to be in the, you know, 10 or 15 years now, 10 or 15 years from now, where will the Dow Jones be? Where will, you know, the market itself move? Where will McDonald's be 10 or 15 years now? Where will Disney be, you know, Nike, the brands that we all know and that we, you know, for example, uh, we have Verizon, you know, people pay, you pay into Verizon two, three hundred dollars a month, you know, for the last 10, 15, 20 years. But you never think about, well, maybe I can buy stock in Verizon. It's only $50. I can buy stock into Verizon. And also, Verizon is paying dividends. So I, I would take a personal example of myself. And, you know, as a kid, uh, my parents took me and my older brothers. I have three older brothers. And they took us all down to Disney World back in the 80s. And, you know, my dad was proud. He was like, hey, family's going to Disney World. We're taking a Disney trip. To be honest, I look back on it, I really don't remember the trip. The only thing I remember about the trip is the pictures. When they showed me the pictures, because I was only like maybe three years old, I was like, oh, okay. And we went there. I remember going to Disney. I remember going to Nike. I remember going to McDonald's, things like that. And we went all the time. But the thing about it is, when you go back and look at the numbers, I, you know, like I tell people all the time, just look at the numbers. When you go back and look at the numbers back in the 80s, and early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, where was McDonald's then? Where was Disney then? Where was, you know, Nike, all these Apple? Where were those companies then? We supported them. My parents brought the products. They knew about them. We definitely supported them, but they didn't think about investing in them. And when I did my history and uh, when I did my study and I looked back over history, I took that information. I took it back to my parents. I said, hey, you know, mom, dad, well, you know, why you guys didn't invest in this stuff? I remember it was going all the time. Why, you know? And they just honestly told me that, well, son, you know, just be honest with you, you know, we just never really knew about it or thought about it. So that's what kind of motivated me, you know, at a young age to learn more about investing and to uh, have that thirst for knowledge and to, start, and to start the Royal Financial Investment Group and to do it for my son. I have a four-year-old son, Wesley. And, you know, uh, from the day one when he was uh, born, I opened up him a custodial account and I started investing for him. You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of times we think of college, uh, we think of college when the kid is 16 years old. You know, we start thinking about school, we start thinking about their future when they're almost about to graduate. Oh, they need a car, they need to, you know, they need that push in life. And if, think about it, instead of thinking about it when they're 16, let's think about it when they was at birth. You know, if you increase that time horizon, you know, the time horizon being the length, you know, the longer you invest. So if you invested for 18 years versus two years. So, and it's the things that we put our money into every day that I guarantee lost, you know, 
we're going to Walmart and we'll be confident. We're going to Walmart and we'll feel confident and feel good about spending three hundred dollars in Walmart. We'll walk out of Walmart. Everything that we brought for that three hundred dollars will be worth nothing in two to three months, and we know that. But we don't. We feel good about it. But on the other end, if someone said, "Hey, would you mind buying some stock in Walmart?" Well, I don't know. I gotta think about it. You know, uh, I gotta do some research. I really don't know anything about it. And it's that mindset that we will feel so confident in buying liabilities, but we're so hesitant to buy assets. Because even if Walmart lost half of its, the stock lost half of its value, it still did better than the things that you would have brought with it anyway. So it's just that since you don't know about it, since we're not educated about it, we feel good about things that are instant gratification that we can just touch with our hands. You know, we go into the, we go into the store, and we feel good about uh, we go into the store, and we'll feel good about buying um, stuff, but. We were hesitant to buy Nike stock, but we don't spend tens and thousands of dollars on the products, and we feel good about buying the products. So imagine, imagine if yeah, we yeah. take that mindset and said, "Hey, let's let's invest in some of these things." So oh, yeah, you just brought up a good point, man. I um, mm-hmm. I tell people uh, there's a couple things you, you brought in. One, uh, the, one of the first things I got from you was 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 having a long term approach, like thinking 10, 20 years from now. And that's what, uh, if you're on the call right now, you're on the internet listening to us, that's the, that's the one thing I want you to just take a moment to think about right now. I want you to think about 10 years from now, 20 years from now, not for yourself, but for your children. Think about them getting ready to go to college. Think about them getting ready to buy their first house. Think about them getting ready to open their first business. And, and how great would it be for them to already have a financial nest egg that you thought about 20 years prior to them getting to that point? That you as a parent or you as a grandparent, you as an aunt, you as an uncle, um, you said that, hey, I'm going to invest in my child. I believe in my next generation. I believe in the, the offspring of my uh, uh, of my lineage, that I'm going to invest in them now for a greater later. You set them up now for a greater later. And so uh, they, they talk about an oak tree and how, you know, you plant that oak tree. It, it's nothing. It's just under the ground. It's just a seed. But look how 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 vast it grows and so one of the things that we're missing in our community is that long that outlook that 10-year outlook that 15-year outlook that 20-year outlook that long-term outlook to say that hey um this is what i believe in and this is what i'm going to do in order to prepare myself uh 10 years from now 20 years from now or actually to prepare your children 10 years 10 years from now 20 years from now and just to give you an update uh, an idea of what we're talking about here is that he mentioned nike and so I know that we've been a big proponent of buying Jordans, you know, every year, every every time they come out with them, we buy them. And, uh, and that's all well and good. But if you think about when Jordan first came out back in 1986, when the first pair of Jordans came out, if someone would have invested into Nike for you, just $500, just $500, basically two pair of Nikes today. If they would have, you know, you had a little baby shower and everybody brought their little money like the Italians and they said, okay, we're going to take this money, we're going to buy Nike stock because we love Nike. Right now, without having invested anything else into Nike, you would now have over $100,000. That $500 would have grown into over $100,000 just by investing into Nike, just by investing two pair of Jordans uh, into your future uh, at an early age. And so that's kind of what we're talking about, the power of investing, the power of, of um, doing something now so that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you can look back and say, man, that was one of the best financial decisions I ever made. And not for you, not just for you, more so for your kids, because they're the ones that's going to carry on your legacy. Um, they're the ones that's going to carry on your legacy. And so, um, uh, Prince, you mentioned go to your account. Can you, I know we have these, uh, this UGMO, which is the Uniform Gift for Minorities Act. We have the, uh, the uh, UMTA, which is Uniform Minority uh, Trust Act. Um, and I think the stocks will fall, fall under the Trust Act. Can you tell us a little bit about a custodial account? Because I know we've helped, the New Black Wall Street has helped at least five kids open up their first custodial account. So, I mean, how does that process work? Well, essentially, to tie into you know what you're what we're saying earlier, that you know now we have intrigued people's knowledge of like, oh wow, um, I, you know I need to get in on this, or maybe I need to start looking at things differently, and you know that's what one of the things that uh, 
I've been doing over the years is that taking people from square one, showing them step by step how to open up a brokerage account for themselves. And, you know, they can go in, like they can get out the phone today, get a tutorial, open up their account today, transfer their money into that account and start investing, you know, within the next two or three days. Now, what a custodial account is, a custodial account is uh, essentially like if you want to open up an account for your kid. Let's say you have a one-year-old, little Timmy or whatever, right? And, you know, you can open up an account for him. You can, well, how can I buy a stock for him? Of course, he's not old enough. He's a minor. So what you can do is you can open an account for him, have his name on the account, and you can take that account, and you can uh, take that account, you can open an account for him, and you can purchase stocks for him, just like anything else. You can take and buy General Electric, you can do other things like that. Now, a thing that a lot of us are big on uh, are 529 plans, you know, college, college funds and stuff like that, which are great, but this is just my personal thing, is when you go back and, you know, I'm a numbers guy. You know, I say, hey, you know, just look at the numbers. When you go back and look at historical data and you look at a portfolio, you look at stocks versus uh, 529 plans, stocks blow them out of the water over general. I mean, in general, for a prime example, you can say, hey, I don't know. I, heck, I don't know which companies to invest in or whatever. You can sit back and um, get your ETF. You can just put $500 into the uh, ETF that tracks the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is the index that tracks the 30 uh, most major domestic companies like, you know, your Apple and Verizon and the list goes on of major com McDonald's that you know about in the United States. You can just put your money there, gain a dividend and never touch it again. You don't have to be in there every day to click this, click that and just say, hey, I'm just going to put some money here and, and that's it. And like, hey, uh, my son grows up uh, when he turns three or four years old. He loves, uh, you know, Under Armour or he loves Nike or he loves, you know, the Sony video games or PlayStation, whatever, the EA Sports. He loves those things. Right now, you look at uh, GameStop. GameStop is paying, I want to say, 3% in dividends. So 3% in annual dividends, that's a residual. You can put that into the drip program to where your uh, dividends is being reinvested. You can just leave it there. That's what a custodial account can do. You know, um, I think on average, last year... Parents spent over three hundred and twenty-six dollars on birthdays, which is great, which is fine on average. People spent over three and felt good about it. But hey, I felt. But when you walk away from that birthday, two months later, what what is any of that stuff is going to be worth? You know, it's nothing's going to have any value yep. to it. So you don't have a memory. memory. Uh, so, so you mentioned you mentioned three percent, man, and most people are putting their money into a savings account, which is getting them what point oh three percent at best. At, at, I mean, the national average right now, the national high for a savings account, the high, is like 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Wow. And <laughs> that's the national high for, for that. <laughs> and the thing, you know, when you go into, you know, your, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm so not an advocate. When we put our money into a savings account, we're, we're basically giving the bank the right to, to use our money for free. Exactly. What they're doing is they, they're taking, they're going to take your money, give you 0.25 for it. Then when you need a loan, they're going to loan it to you for 15%, or wow. so, uh, 10%, or uh, 12%. And then, you know, they just made wow. a 9% off some money they didn't even own. <laughs> wow. So, so, um, so that's, Prince, that's, man, you got, you got quite a few things that are, that are coming out as well, man. You know, uh, I heard you got this this, this upcoming uh, event or this, this big thing that, that you're dropping soon, man. You want to give us some... So an exclusive, some insight into this this you got this thing you got coming out. Okay, um, on, on my Facebook page and my Instagram, I have been uh, on a countdown for the last few days, and that I just wanted to make a, a big announcement, and you know I'm going to do it here. This is the first time I'll bring it out to the uh, public, and today I will you know announce some more. But for the first time, uh, the Royal Financial Investment Group, you know, in July we'll be publishing. Our first book, which is uh, Wesley Woo! Learns to Invest. Yes. Your Wesley first Learns book, to Invest. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a, a long time coming. You know, um, it took some time, you know, to get it to get it right and everything like that. Uh, I think it's, it's the first of its kind. I haven't seen anything like it. A children's book. Uh, it's, it's geared to parents. You know, I think it would be a great product for parents to give to their nieces, nephews, grandparents to give to their daughters a great birthday a gift present that's going to open up that dialogue 
that's going to, uh, you know, it has about 14 illustrations in it. And it's about a father and a son. It's really based off of myself and my son, Wesley. That's where, you know, the character Wesley comes from. And it's pretty much a gentle guide, you know, into the stock market. You know, it's, it's a story of a father and a son that discovers the stock market. They purchase stock. Uh, they get a dividend check. And, it, you know, how it changes with outlook on things and stuff like that. And I, there's plenty of books that I've seen about saving and, you know, other things like that. But the first time I think uh, I ever seen a book of investing, and it came off of my personal life. I, if, like if my dad was to read this 30 years ago, 35 years ago, uh, how could it change myself and my brother's life? So I think it's a, a, a great book mm-hmm. for us to have. And, you know, I think that it's, it's going to do great things in the public. And I think a lot of people could benefit from it. You know, it'll open up that dialogue with kids. And then open up that dialogue with parents, you know, to have those conversations that we're talking about now to say, wow, you know, I, I don't know anything about the stock market. I don't know what's going on. And it's going to be a, a great guide to open up your minds and to think, OK, maybe I can do this and things like that. And before I get into that, I, I got to first, you know, thank a lot of people that help, you know, uh, the World Finance Investment Group get to this point of releasing our first book. Um, I got to thank my uh, my brother, Gregory Dykes, who uh, helped me out tremendously with uh, putting things together and bringing ideas together. Uh, Randy Johnson, a great friend of mine. Andy Moulter is a, a great friend of mine for all together who's uh, been with my company from uh, day one and helping and assisting, you know, done great things to get me to this point. Uh, of course, you know, my wife and my son, Wesley, as well, who's done great things, who really inspired me to write this book, you know, uh, from my dad to all the way down to you know my son to the next generation and you know anybody that follow us they can see that you know we've been on this for quite some time now uh for some years to you know from from uh facebook page facebook post to youtube channel to uh, a website and now our first book so it's uh been published through royal financial investment group and it'll be available to the public in july on uh, lulu.com and around about August we'll have it on all the major sites as far as Amazon it'll be available uh, through Amazon Barnes and Nobles iBook Kindle all those things for uh, you can order a hard copy you can order a soft, a soft copy and you also can uh, download it you know put it on your Kindle your iPhones all of the good stuff like that I think it's a, a great thing and I would really appreciate it if people went out and supported it uh, a lot of you know, I know a lot of people say, hey, it's finances, people won't be interested in it, but I, I beg to differ. I think that this is something that the public really needs. It's not something I just come out of the whim off of, like, oh, this is a great way to make money. Something I've been doing for years, something I think the public will greatly need, and this is our first product that someone can go out and purchase, so I would greatly appreciate the support, and to uh, for the next month, we'll be doing some more uh, publicity and announcing it to uh, everybody uh, for its release come July this summer. I think it would be a, a great thing for, you know, for people just to go out and support and pick up. And if it's supported, you know, it's, we can do better and greater things in the future. So I really would like to, and I really would like it, and I would really appreciate people to support, to come out and, you know, purchase the book. So. Yeah, man, this is awesome. I, I'm really seeing, I'm just thinking, man, man, if, if, if you know, me having a child and, and maybe there's some people out there that really, you know, don't really, you know, are not really following the market, don't understand the market, man. This could be, like you said, a great talking point, a great uh, avenue. And it may even inspire uh, some of the parents to go out and learn more about about investing in money and how all this stuff works, man. I think that, that is just absolutely awesome. Uh, well, right now, guys, man, I know you guys have been uh, kind of listening to us kind of ramble and talk, man. And Prince has been giving some great information, man. We want to actually open it up to our callers. And we got a few people that are actually online as well. And if you're online, you can chat. Uh, I, I've got you. I've got you on, online here watching. So if you got a question for Prince, if you're online, you can chat it right now. We're going to open up the line for some callers. I see a, a line in one zero zero one that looks very familiar to me. I think that is uh, Mr. Toom, man. I'm gonna open you up. See if you got anything for Prince. Oh man, hey, what's Toome. going on, bro? What's going on? Hey, can Toome. you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. Welcome to New Black Wall Street, man. We got Prince Dykes on the line and Toon here uh, joining us. What's going on, Toon? Man, I'm loving it, man. I feel like I swear I feel like I earned some money already. I'm about to go check my bank account. I feel like a millionaire right now, getting all this good information. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm loving the show, bro. I swear I'm loving the show, man. Uh, I do got.
got a question. Like, I'm I'm one of them stocks for dummies. Like, what do I get started? Do I log on like to a website? And like, cause I, I think I know a few companies. Like, okay, let's just say Apple. In my foreseeable future, I see a lot of people switching a lot of their things to Apple. Uh, and I see them having longevity, such Apple, Nike, and I can see longevity in them. And I could possibly see myself investing into uh like uh utilities like gas and lights but like what do i get started what can i just take about 40 50 bucks and just do i go like www.stocks.com i have no idea where to go who do i call what do i do do i what do how do i go about getting started like i have no idea right okay um okay oh well thank you i'm glad you're loving the show and things like that um www.royalfinancial.com will take you over to my uh, YouTube channel and I have tutorials about E-Trade per se. Uh, you can go to, it's a ton of sites out there that you can start brokerage accounts with. You can go to uh, E-Trade.com, from, to Scottdale.com, to ShareBuilder, but one in particular that I use is E-Trade.com. So you can go into www.etrade.com, put in your information, it's just like setting up a, a banking account online. Once you get your information in, you transfer your money in. It takes about two or three business days to transfer your money in. Once your money is in there and settled, then you can be, you can buy stock in Apple and everything by next week. And also with that, when you like you said, a company like Apple and like the company like we spoke Nike, like the company like Verizon, uh, the list just goes on. General Motors, Ford. Like right now, some people are getting into a Ford every day, buying Fords, but nobody thinks about first. And what's going to happen is you're going to earn a dividend check as well. So uh, you can definitely hit me uh, on my uh, inbox, on you know, on Facebook, or you can email me info at royalfinancial.com. And I definitely, uh, I have over 120 something videos up uh, showing people from step one to walk in and to purchasing their first stock, selling their first stock, all the other good stuff that I think is beneficial. And so, you, so, and so also and, uh, okay. Go ahead, man. All right. This is a tag off as well. Something that you, if you don't want to invest in a particular company, some you may can look into is mutual funds. You know, you can just say, hey, I can put some money back and I can invest into technology funds or something like that as well. That can help you. Where you get a group of stuff. All right. So, so man, I think basically uh, to kind of get started uh, is basically you got to get to a, a place where you can actually open an account. And then also, uh, even before that, you may want to check out his uh, his YouTube site so that you can uh, kind of look through all of the uh, all of the uh, tutorials and get an idea of how all this stuff works. Uh, because you don't really have access to the market right now, no matter how much money you have, until you have a brokerage account. Uh, but even before, one of the first steps that I tell people is get educated. And so we're bringing some knowledge to you now. But then getting educated is going to be, hey, well, I'm going to go and self-educate myself. I'm going to go watch some of these videos that he's already put out that's already out there on YouTube, on the Internet, that's going to walk me through step-by-step step on how to get started. <clears throat> does, that, uh, does that help, too? Yeah, you know what? Uh, in the link, if you can, if that's possible, bro, like, because you put, like, the link to his videos in the, uh, in the show bio, like, you know, the, the event, and you can write it in there, and I could just screenshot it and say, because I'm driving that. So I could just screenshot yeah. it and say, and I'll be able to go check out, man, that's, I got a lot of time to listen to him while going up and down the road, so that'll be pretty dope. Yeah. Um, well, definitely. Man, I, I, I'm excited, man. I want to play. So then, is it like a certain code? Because I know, like, on certain phones, they get, like, stock updates, and then it'll be showing, like, if what's up or down, the Dow Jones and stuff like that on your phone, then I'll be able to just type in whatever the code is for the whoever I'm investing in and I'll be able to watch it like get it is update every day, right? With with the opening yeah. of the market, right? Yeah, so um, so so what you can do there, I tell people um, like this, man, you got a smartphone, why not do smart things with it? And one of the things that you can do is you can download an application to your phone called Yahoo Finance. Um, we go to Yahoo all the time for email to watch sports and to get news, but they got a little tab that's called Finance. You download Yahoo, Yahoo Finance app to your phone, that's going to allow you to create what we call a watch list. A watch list is where you're going to put those companies that you're interested in. So you mentioned Apple. Um, their, their ticket symbol is double APL. So after you download Yahoo Finance to your phone, just put in double APL 
into your watch list. Now you're watching Apple from now until whenever you decide not to watch them anymore. So anytime anything happens with Apple, any, any news comes out, uh, that new phone coming out, uh, the iPad or something, whatever, um, it's going to send you that alert to your phone. You better read up the news on the, on Apple. It's just like doing research on anything else. It's just giving you access to uh, those particular companies. And so I hope that helped, uh, Tune. We're going to move on uh, to another caller and see who we got here. We got a, a, a caller ending in line 3737. Uh, you're going live with uh, the new Black Wall Street. Hello? Hello. Hi. Good morning. Hey, Hi, Fred. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? Fine. I, I had a question about the, the book part because I kind of heard a book. Is that book for kids? Is that book geared towards children? The book it's that you... It, it's going to be very uh, kid friendly. Uh, it's for okay. parents and adults. It's going to be, you know, it's for children. So, you know, it, it, it has about 14 illustrations in it. And, you know, it's the father and the son that's going through the market. So it's going to be very understandable for kids, uh, very broken down for kids and adults, too. So it's very kid friendly. Okay. And what's the title of it again? Uh, Wesley. It's my son's name. Uh, Wesley Learns to Invest. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, you gave me some great information about that life insurance. I uh, I didn't know that part. I mean, I you know, I have it, but didn't really kind of know, like, well, what do they do with the money when you, you know? Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, Learn something new definitely. every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I will be getting that book, though. I will, um, you know, for me and my okay. kids, so. Okay, thank oh, you. Cool. I definitely appreciate it. No problem. So coming out in July, thanks so much for calling in. One second, we'll move on to the next caller here. See what we got. We got a caller ending in line 2552. You're, you're live now with the New Black Wall Street. 2552. Two five five two. All right, moving on. We got a caller ending in nine two six five nine two six five. You're on live now with the New Black Wall Street. Nine two six five. All right, moving on. The caller ending in eighty five hundred eighty five hundred. You're on live now with the New Black Wall Street. Hi, how about you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good. Um, hey, who I do just had a question. Um, this is Lamina. Hey, Lamina, how are you? Good. I'm fine. Um, I had a question about the um. Now you said edu self educate yourself before you actually go into like looking at stocks and stuff. So will a class be beneficial for like if I wanted to go into stocks or looking and investing in a stock? Will like me taking up a class on it be good or something good to do well absolutely um if you decide to take a class that that's a part of you just like if you're in real estate right you're going to take a real estate class just like uh prince had to take his his courses to get licensed so he yeah, definitely um mm -hmm. you know, taking a class to understand the market what it is how long it's been around what all these different terms mean you know if you were to go to, to france you're going to take some french right some french courses mm -hmm. so you got to understand the lingo you got to understand how the stock market works uh, what it all means, how long it's been around to give you a basic uh, knowledge and understanding. Now, the course won't tell you how to invest, right? It's just going to teach you mm -hmm. about the stock market. Uh, but what uh, but what Prince does is he takes all of that information and he teaches you really how to invest, how to buy and how to sell through all of his videos. So you can take okay. that course along with watching those videos basically for free online. Oh, um, yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, so, how, so you think about that investment. I get, I get free information, and I'm supporting a guy that's been putting out a how many videos you got out now, Chris? About a, a 120, something like that. Yeah, it's a little like little crazy. Yeah, a little 120. So. <laughs> yeah, so you get 120. <laughs> you, know. you, you basically add 120 videos to your library from the from the <laughs> from your home, from your personal from your personal phone to give you a lot of information while you're seeking out the best you know class for you to take so to speak yeah um also i have another question now when you get into actually buying the stock is can you just pull out any time or is a certain amount of time that you have to have your money in there 
Uh, well, that would go with, uh, you have to look at the volume of stock, right? The volume, mm -hmm. it tells you how far something is uh, traded back and forth, and it will, it, a, a stock will tell you, well, hold on a second, Wes. Say hey, Wes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So uh, essentially, uh, essentially, what the volume of a stock is, it'll tell you how many times it's been transferred, not transferred, but how many times it has uh, it gets touched in a day. So you something like a, a blue a blue chip like a, a major stock like uh, Visa and Apple companies that you know they get touched you know millions of times a day. So it's very easy to sell them. What you need to be worried about is when people go out and they buy you know penny stocks that have zero to little volume. When you have yeah. those, that means too many people may not be interested in them. But, you know, when you get major companies, um, they go pretty well. It's when you get on the pink slip in the OTC market, you know, like the little penny stock things, those are ones that you could be stuck with. Uh, but other than that, you can sell them with it instantly, you know, okay. within seconds. You can buy it and sell it five, ten minutes later. You know, people do oh, that. Wow. Actually, day traders do that. So you can, it doesn't take like... A time now if you get a mutual fund on the other hand if you go to sell a mutual fund you have to wait to the end of the day so if you buy shares shares in a mutual fund you have to wait to the end of the day before it uh cancels out because the mutual fund not cancels out but before it sells because the mutual fund what it does is at the end of the day that's how it collects everything because okay. the mutual fund is not just bad. one stock yes okay it it's a bunch of stocks put together so but anything other than that, if you go out and buy a regular blue chip stock like you got out today and just went off and bought Verizon, you can sell it five minutes later, no problem. Or two seconds later. You know, that all depends on you. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for the information. Oh, definitely, definitely. All right. Thank you, thank you. Thanks so much okay, you're for, welcome. for calling in and sharing with us today, uh, Lamina. You're welcome. Thank you. So, uh, so Prince, obviously, we're still getting back to our um, our, our, our our topic, which is kids' death, and you you've written a book um, uh, to to help uh, parents and children to understand investing a little bit better, and and, and obviously, we got a few questions just about investing in stocks because many of us just haven't done it. But as we're looking at the next generation, as we're looking at um, you know our children, um, you know, is there a particular approach? Uh, that you can that you would that you would recommend as far as okay i'm going to like for example right we're not going we're, it doesn't really make much sense to say i'm gonna i'm gonna invest in a penny stock for my child right i mean like we don't i mean mm -hmm. that i don't know how wise that would be but um uh, but you mentioned um you mentioned uh etfs you mentioned mutual funds um there's a couple of different things that have kind of come out man what would you what, if you were it, it, with, with what you know today, if your child was back at one, I know he's four, but he was back at one, someone mm -hmm. starting out fresh, got a newborn baby, man, and they really say, hey, I, I, I listened to this call today, and I really want to get started. I want to do this for my kids, man. What do they, uh, what, what, do you, what do you suggest? What do they start? How do they get going? Okay, now, this is uh, my, my approach, my opinion. If you start when a child is one, and I'm presuming you're going to leave that money there to their 16, 17, 18, so that means that you have a 16 to 18 year time horizon, which is a very long time horizon. With anybody that is that young, if you know, hey, I'm going to be investing for 18 years, it's that in the beginning, you want to become risky, not very risky, but a little bit risky, like for, for prime example, investing in Apple and overall, it's kind of considered a risky investment because let's say, you know, Apple tanks and goes away, then it can, you know, uh, uh, it could, you know, you could lose your investment. But the thing about it is, a very conservative investment would be a savings account. You know, if I'm saving for 18 years, why would I need a savings account? A savings account is going to gain me, like we said, the national high right now is 0.25, but inflation is three or 4%. You know, the inflation is the price of everything that's going up. You know, uh, $10 today won't be the same $10 in 15 years due to inflation so you have to keep up you have to at least match or beat inflation so you have to ask yourself okay what investment is going to match or beat inflation well it's obvious your savings account is not going to do it you're actually going to lose with your savings account your savings account is going to pay you 2.5 but the price of everything is going up by three or four percent so for me uh i would say i would find a company like uh, for prime example uh I have a Verizon phone. I have a Verizon phone. My brothers have Verizon phones. My dad has a Verizon phone. My sister-in-laws have a, you know, majority of everybody in my immediate family, we all have Verizon. So 
we're looking at giving Verizon a thousand to two thousand dollars per month. And then when you look at Verizon, you know, it's the number one uh, carrier. Then you also look at it, you will say, wow, Verizon is paying four percent, right? So I will say, I will start off with a that would be a company I would be interested in because first of all, it's paying me a dividend. It's a company that I am supporting every single day that I'm putting money into. So when you go to pay that Verizon bill, when they go up on those plans, you don't feel as bad when you have to, you know, pay $200. You're like, well, you know, <laughs> you, know, you know, when you actually, when you connect it with the company, you don't feel as bad when you go out and buy that, you know, when you know you have 190 shares, you don't feel so bad when you go buy those Nike shoes. You don't feel so bad when you have to swipe that credit card and um, send up your monthly bill for Verizon. So a company like a Verizon, I would say, uh, another company would be something like a Ford. A Ford right now is fifteen dollars a share. You drive, you know. Dad loves Ford. Mom loves Ford. You get into a Ford every day. You buy a new one every two, three, four, five years, and it also pays three percent. So imagine where, where will Ford be in ten, fifteen years? When you look at companies like Ford, look at when they crashed in two thousand eight. The government has said, "I would not let this company fail." When the, when Ford, when the when the auto industry went went away, General Motors, Ford. All the little things like that. The government went and bailed them out. The government said, hey, we cannot let these companies fail. So if I'm going to be in an investment for 18 years, why would I not be in a company that is paying a solid dividend that the government says is not going to let fail? That's just my way of thinking man, about you just, it. Uh, you, you just, I yeah. think you just shifted a whole mindset, man. I don't know who, whoever on this phone or whoever on the line, I don't think they, I, I, I think that whole mindset just shift with your last statement. Why would you not invest yeah. in something that the government has already said they're not going to let, uh, they're not going to let fail? I just, I want that to sink in, man. Why would you not invest in an area where the government for which you live in, the country for which you live in, has basically said that we're going to change, we're going to, we're not going to let this company fail. Not only are we not going to let this company fail, we're going to make sure the taxpayers are the ones that bail <laughs> this company out. <laughs> Exactly. And you got and when you have a and you you have a one year old child, why wouldn't you want your child connected with something like that? You know? Why wouldn't you why wouldn't why won't you have your child connected with something that you know is not gonna fail for fifteen years? And that is paying a, that is paying you quarterly. Every three months is paying you. That's keeping up with the inflation. I mean you gotta think about it, you know, like one of my videos I wrote is called uh You might as well invest because you're losing anyway. Because yeah. if you don't invest, you, you're losing. Like I just told you, you put your money into a savings account, it's a guaranteed loss. You're going to lose with inflation. And if you don't invest, you're losing against inflation. So you might as well learn about it and put your money somewhere. So if you say, well, I'm not going to invest because I don't trust that investment. My question is, what are you going to do with it? Spend it? Yeah. What are you, you going to do? Put yeah, it in the child's... Uh, I tell in, people all the time, a, man, if you... Uh, if you want to be wealthy, you got to do what the wealthy people do, man. And the wealthy people, they learn how to invest, which is basically uh, making your money work for you instead of you working so hard for your money. Um, and so, uh, Prince, mm -hmm. I want to kind of kind of get to the end of the show here. Man. I want to want to find out your, okay. your contact info, how people can follow you, um, you know, get in touch with you, um, you know, your YouTube page, all that pertinent information. Uh, I know we got some people that's got pens and paper ready to write that stuff down. So, and even if you don't, we'll uh, we'll we'll post that in the event page. Okay, uh, my name is Prince Dykes. You know, Prince like the singer, P R I N C E Dykes D Y K E S. Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook uh, with that. Also, you can look up Royal Financial Investment Group um, www.facebook.com/slash Royal Financial Group. You can look us up on uh, Facebook, go and like that page. We put up information, you know, essentially daily, share articles, a bunch of our YouTube videos. Um, my YouTube channel, you can go in and just, if you type in the word E-Trade, uh, it's like the number one, number two video that's up there uh, from Royal Financial Investment Group. Or you can just type in Royal Financial Investment Group into your E-Trade. Uh, not into your E-Trade, but into your uh, YouTube, and the YouTube channel will come up. Um, also, you can uh, find me on Twitter at Royal Financials. Um, also, uh, the website is www.royalfinancials.com. You can get in contact with me, you know, very easily with uh, dropping comments below the video. You see a video, you're kind of lost with it. You can just 
uh, drop a comment below in the video. Also, you can um, email me at info, I-N-F-O, at royalfinancials.com, or you can email me at prince, P-R-I-N-C-E, at royalfinancials.com. Uh, just hit me up on Facebook, YouTube, uh, my website, all of the good stuff. So uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so get out, man. Like, subscribe, uh, your Royal Financials, the YouTube page, man. Go be on the lookout for uh, Wesley Learns to Invest, the new book being published and coming out um, by Royal Financial Investment Group. I uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today, Prince, man, and sharing this wealth of knowledge with uh, with with us, our listeners, and our callers, and our our website uh, and our web viewers. Uh, man, this is the uh, New Black Wall Street. Your host, uh, ERGJ, the Intelligent Investor, has been a, a, a a pleasure uh, coming to you today. And I tell you guys to be on the lookout for our next week's episode. We're going to start talking about uh, multi-level marketing, the network marketing, direct selling, affiliate marketing. It's going to be a hot show, man. We're going to start talking about things that people have been wanting to talk about for the longest and just haven't talked about it. So the, the what, what we believe is uh, – Talking about money should no longer be a taboo subject. Why not get it out in the open? Because when you talk about it, you can bring more of it into your hands. It's the things that you think about that you bring about. And so at any rate, thanks so much for tuning in today to the uh, New Black Wall Street Radio Show. I want you to always remember that black equals wealth. The New Black Wall Street Thank you for joining the show We gave a lot of great tips But it's time to go Take the knowledge we shared Hope you use it and grow We'll yeah. see you all there At the next episode of The New Black Wall Street The New Black Wall Street <laughs>